Giuseppe Verdi's beloved opera Aida, one of the big kahunas, the opera that ends with a famous double scene, is being staged in Vancouver by Vancouver Opera. Two opera stars from the USA are in Canada to entertain us. From the state of Georgia, Morris Robinson from Oklahoma, Arnold Rawls are in town to make their Vancouver Opera debut. It is my pleasure to welcome Morris Robinson and Arnold Rawls to Studio 4 to tell us more. Well, I've never interviewed a warrior and a high priest before. <laughs> huh? How did you two meet? Uh, we met doing the same opera, actually, in Florida uh, about 2007, was it? Seven or eight, yeah, one of the two. My mm -hmm. first time doing this role. I've done The King before. Actually, The King was the first thing I ever did. And it was his first time doing Rodimus. And uh, yeah, we paired up then, and we've been, mm -hmm. been knowing each other ever since. Yeah, yeah it was interesting, because I was there in Florida uh, to sing three performances of a 12-performance run. Morris was doing all 12. And um, I did all the rehearsals, and another big star was coming from Europe to sing nine of the shows, and he just never <clears throat> arrived. Mm. So I ended up singing all 12. A happy accident. It was. I was very sad. Uh, I did send him flowers and <laughs> <laughs> chocolates. And yeah, but don't get too well. <laughs> exactly. No, uh, I, I read in my opera uh, for Dummies book that uh, when it was first performed in Italy, Aida, there were 32 curtain calls. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Wow. wow. Yeah. If we could get 15, we'd be very happy. That's I good, too. Happy with that much, yeah. 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 Well, the yeah. first time ever was in Cairo in 1871 or something, Correct. and then Verdi didn't go. Yeah. And then he, it, it's, he it was in go. Italy. Well, I think that the reason he didn't go, the one in Cairo, is because they only invited dignitaries. And uh, oh. he wanted to see, he, wanted, he didn't write it for that event. He wanted oh. it to be more for the common people that supported the opera. So he waited for the European debut in La Scala, which was uh, February. I think 72, the right? Next year, the very next I think, year, yes. yeah. February 8th or something like that, yeah. How With interesting. With a completely different cast, completely different cast. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the uh, Cairo opera was very shishi, as you said. Correct. It's politicians right. and people like that, and he wanted the people, he wanted the people to see the opera. I guess yes. he got what he wanted. If he got 32 curtain calls, it must have been an amazing Apparently something yeah. happened, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now you started out in the football. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Were you singing in the locker room and somebody discovered <laughs> you? I don't, know much, I don't know how much you know about American football, but you're from I America, know, so you I do. am, and I was a Broncos fan from the time I could wiggle. Well, there's not a lot of singing going on in the locker room, so. <laughs> no, true. Some <laughs> but, pinching. Uh, exactly. No, um, I, I went to high school in Atlanta, Georgia, and I went to high school performing arts. And uh, while there, I was also on the football team, captain of the football team. I ended up quitting the band so I wouldn't have to play ba marching band so I could play football. So in order to stay at the school, I had to join the chorus. So I actually became a singer so that I could play football. And uh, okay. so, yeah, singing took care yeah. of my football then, and now it's taking care of me. So. Oh, of course. But what instrument did you play in the marching band? I was a baritone horn player. Yeah. So was I. Did you the really? player. Really? Yeah. And my father was a, a big football star at Louisiana Tech, and so he wanted me to play football and made me try out for the football team. <laughs> and if I, if I made the football team, I could be in the band. So I did mm -hmm. make the football team. So I came home and said, Dad, I made the football team, and I'd like to be in the band. Therefore, I quit the football. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So I had one day career, one day career in mm -hmm. football. Well, you know, we're both from the South, so mm -hmm. uh, down South. I noticed. Is, yeah, there's, <laughs> there are two seasons. There's football season and preseason. That's it. So. Yeah, okay. it's a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. you know. Big deal. And you watch NFL today? Are you hooked? It, you know, it took me a long time to be able to watch college football and then mm -hmm. the NFL because I didn't play in the NFL. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very hard for me to digest the fact that people that I played against or played with were actually getting paid to do something I love to do, and I just didn't make mm -hmm. it. Uh, so uh, it, it took a long time for me to even come to, to the conclusion that, okay, this is over. It's time to move on. Uh, I can watch it now because nobody my age is left playing. I think Brett Favre finally retired, okay. so that's it. And Peyton, Peyton's would probably Peyton's, come to the he's opera now. Than I am. Yeah, he's younger than but I am. But he could come to the opera, so maybe well, Joe Montana, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, those guys. You know, but you know, Peyton's going to uh, to Denver now, so he's going to be I back know. out there again, giving it a shot. I hear tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's wow. older than some, so he's we'll 35, see. 35, 36, yeah. Well, he still has some, some years left in his body, I think. I think Gotta so. protect that neck. Let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> protect the neck. Now, opera, your voice, your beautiful voice voice. Uh, you've been described as a, a young Pavarotti. Well, um, uh, did I, you know? I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, I read it. It's in here somewhere. You read it somewhere. Well, he is one of my favorite singers. Mm. Um, I just, I grew up listening to um, the world's greatest tenor arias by Pavarotti. Played that record over and over. He was one of my favorites. 
And I also like Benjamin Ogili, who's one of the mm. old singers mm. that Pavarotti loved. Mm -hmm. was one of his favorite singers. So I think there's quite a heritage on um, recorded, um, recorded opera that right. if, if one listens to can uh, get a lot of vocal lessons just Very from some so. of those guys. And uh, does somebody mentor you today? Do you have a voice coach? Someone who comes in and says, you know, Arnold, I loved oh, how you sang. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, maybe we could tweak it here or there. Absolutely. I have um, a wonderful coach mentor, um, a conductor, Eric Weimer from the Lyric Opera mm -hmm. Chicago, mm -hmm. that has been working with me for 10 years. And if it weren't for him, I would not be having a career. Wow. See? And I, you were hooked on records at three or something. I think it was you. <laughs> it was in something I read. Was it you at no, three you were hooked on records? No. No. My, it was probably him. My dad had a big jazz record collection, and he used to keep it in the stereo. And I, I guess he didn't think I had access to it because I was so young. But apparently, he came home from work one day, and my mom was in the kitchen, probably on the phone. And I was sitting in the middle of the, of the living room floor with album spread out all over the place. <laughs> Great. Because I was playing, yeah. Little dirty fingers. Little dirty fingers all over with the scratches and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my mother actually was, a, everything round, she said, I, I called it a record. Well, Weka at the time. And she thought something was wrong with me. And then her neighbor said, no, he's just musically inclined. And uh -huh. uh, ever since then, I mean, I could pre pretty much pick up an instrument and make a good account for it within a few hours if I just figured out things. So, yeah, I've, I've always, I mean, even now when I go home, I'm the opera star, if you will, supposedly. Right. But I go home to my little church in Tyrone, Georgia, and I sit behind the drums and play. Uh, you know, I just join in. Larry Brownlee plays bass guitar at my church every Isn't now and then. Isn't that crazy? Really? Yeah, we're, we're, so Baptist we, tradition? Yeah, yeah. yeah my, oh, there's so much fun the Baptist church, isn't it? I'm the Baptist tradition also. As a matter of fact, I came up through church music. When I graduated college, I was at a, at a church as a, a minister of music, director of music, for really? seven years before I started singing mm. opera. Both of us came into this very late in the game. Yeah. So dad, gospel maybe dad. one day. Mm -hmm. A oh. little gospel album. Who uh, going home? I already home. got one. Got, <laughs> is that going home? Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Is yeah. that the song I know? Like going home, going, going home, home, going home. I'll be going. Yeah, from home. the Dvorak piece. Yeah. yeah. Very. Uh, I love that. Uh, folky type melody. I was going to yeah. have that played at my funeral. That or Edith Piaf. I haven't decided. Oh, we wow. need to get that scheduled. We could help you with that. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Because it's likely I'll go first. Uh, well, I just don't want an no. ordinary trip down that aisle. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> no, Absolutely. I want some singers. No, I came from a long line. My granddad and dad were Baptist ministers. My great, my granddad passed away my dad still is a Baptist minister so I I grew up in church all my life so that I think that's my first conductor was a choir director and really? I learned then how to follow the beat and how to follow his hand because you know mm -hmm. they're very very hard on you and, and sure you know, they don't allow you to to waver from what they're doing and I think that that discipline learned there carries over to what I'm doing now you know? well I think if you interview a hundred singers um, mm -hmm. Most of them would have come up through the church singing as children in children's choirs, so. uh, uh, adult choirs, and that's mm -hmm. part of the conditioning mm -hmm. to get us going because it's like an athletic event. Singing. And a lot of the pop singers, as you know, like in the the, the late Whitney Houston and Absolutely. all of them, they all immersed in the church. And I think Misha Bruger Gosman, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know her, well, but I think she sang in the church too. We did yeah. Beethoven's mm -hmm. Night together with the National Symphony Orchestra, Misha okay. and I. Okay, yeah. because you both concert sing, and you have an album too. Yes. Uh, sacred, sacred Hymns for Tenor, I is, think is the name. Is that Love it. Lifted Me? Yeah. Love Lifted Me. It's um, funny that we both have religious CDs. Yeah. See, you guys are hooked because you have, <laughs> you've got football. This is kind of kismet. Yeah. you got Aida, of course. Yeah. That too. Let's talk about Aida. Aida. Uh, the story is kind of the, for people who've never seen Aida. Oh, in a uh, nutshell. Enslaved Ethiopian yeah, Princess. Yeah. yeah, the enslaved Ethiopian princess is in love with Radames, who's the tenor, me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm in love with her, but um, the princess of Egypt has her eye on me and wants me for herself. So it's the power versus passion versus I really would like to rule Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so I <laughs> think maybe I could have Egypt right. and Aida mm -hmm. and Omneris, the princess, and everything be happy. Of course, what man wouldn't want that? Exactly. But the, a women, country and but a the girl. women don't want to <laughs> share. The women don't want to share. Mm -hmm. Um, I get that. So they go at it, and um, in the end, I am put to death with Aida in, in a uh, tomb. Yeah, by this guy, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really, mm -hmm. it's a pretty great event. And I must say, I asked Jim Wright, the managing director. Yes, like, great where, managing director. Fabulous. Yes. Where did you find this cast? Because from mm -hmm. soup to nuts, the cast yeah, of this right. Aida cast. is really, really wow. terrific. And both of you have sung at the Met. 
Yep. And yes. La Scala? No. The Met? Not yet? Not La Scala. Mm -hmm. We keep putting them off, don't we, Morris? <laughs> well, sometimes you have to because you don't like to travel so much. I don't want to be overexposed. No, that's the thing. I'm, I don't want to be overexposed. That would be terrible if they called. No. But do you both have agents? Do you have oh, opera yes. agents oh, yeah. and they yeah. get to they the gig? They kind of take care of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a dream role? Uh, well, I'm singing all the things that I think I should be singing right mm -hmm. now. I don't have dream roles that I have not sung, more so dream performances or places I'd like to sing the roles that I've become known for. And uh, obviously that's back at home at the Met, uh, singing some of these roles, uh, singing the same roles at La Scala, Covent Garden. All the things that I do now, I think I, you know, I'm looking forward to singing them at all the, all the great places. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward so to that. So you've found your niche. As I think so. Say. I mean, as, as I came into this game quite late, uh, I knew from the very beginning what my voice was. I didn't have to go through conservatory and go through all the many years of guessing and, mm -hmm. and trying things out. I knew where I fit, and uh, and because of that, uh, things are lined up for me as they should be, right. and I just have to knock them down as I go. How so, great to find yeah. your lane. Yeah. Mm. Early Oprah said that. It's, she knows where her lane is. Absolutely. She's always, she figured it out early. <laughs> it's and tough. She know where, knows where her lane is, and she doesn't try to do. I'd like to be like, in Oprah's lane. There's billions well, of dollars in that lane. <laughs> I'd like to be in that lane, too. That's a good lane to yeah. be in. No mm -hmm. And yeah. you're meeting with uh, uh, a Canadian. A Canadian, Soon. yes. Can I tell that? Um, it's kind of a secret. No, it's not a secret. He probably just doesn't want people to know he's in town, town. right now. But one of our famous tenors, a one of the tenor, famous Helen tenor, tenor. been on this show before. Canada. Hails from Northern British Columbia. Uh, initials B H. Yeah, the uh, fact that he's, <laughs> he's been on this show before. He's been on this show before, and he's so hip. Yeah, he's very hip. He's very hip. Is he yeah. hip? He's very, he's very hip. hip. No, he is um, one of the great Canadian singers and has mm -hmm. been very um, important to me as I've developed because I've watched his career. Uh, it's Ben Hefner. Watched his career and have really um, modeled some of the things that mm -hmm. I do after what he has done. And so we'll be having coffee tomorrow. How wonderful. One of the yeah. nicest guys in this business, yeah. too. Just he one sure of the is. Nicest fine, fine guys, yeah. You know, I sang, I shouldn't say I sang with Ben Hefner. That would be an exaggeration. <laughs> but when I was on radio, we used to sing little ditties, funny. Yeah. Uh, it, because he was a folk singer to start. Is that right? In the beginning, yes. Cool. I don't know if he ever played football. Yeah, the size. Mm. Well, you know, this Good guy, <laughs> Ben Hefner, is, is one of the most famous singers in the world oh, right now. Right. And when I was living in Chicago, I've was artist in residence at Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. And um, I asked Ben to, to come to Moody to speak to the students and to sing for us. And um, of course, and I said, I, and you know, we'll pay you, what do you want? And he right. said, well, where's the best cup of coffee in town? So that guy was so generous to come and speak to students to sing for them and answer the questions for, for like a cup of coffee. How lovely, and you That's two amazing. are generous for getting up thank you. early in the morning, <laughs> bringing all your star power to thank Studio you. 4. I thank you, and thank we'll you. see you in Aida. And yeah. uh, begins Saturday through the weekend, Tuesday, Thursday, at the Queen Elizabeth Theater. Of course, Morris Robinson and Arnold Rawls.